Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Facebook Live as we uh, have our morning devotions. And uh, I trust that you rested well last night. And uh, if not, you've had a few cups of coffee already. Um, I have to say that uh, last night as we were here um, working around on the building and getting ready to take a little break for some dinner, uh, received word that our missionary brother Gene Sharp's wife, Benita, um, was killed in an automobile accident. And uh, I called Brother Gene, who is in Ohio right now, and um, he was devastated. Uh, Benita was a beautiful Christian woman and uh, had been at Freeway many times and uh, was dearly beloved of our people, very close with my wife, Linda. And uh, there's five children whose hearts today are just shattered and a, and a dear man uh, who is in a state of shock. And of course, the Lord is holding him in the, in the hollow of his hand. But we need to pray for Gene and we need to pray for Weston and Wade and for, for Harmony and for Lauren and for Lacey that the Lord would give them grace. And I want to encourage you to pray for our missionary brother, Matt Johnson. Matt is uh, Benita's brother. And I called brother Matt and, and his wife, Anetta, last night. And, and they're down in Mexico City and uh, their hearts are broken because his sister has been taken suddenly. And they all are comforted in knowing that she's with the Lord and they'll see her again one day. But uh, just... Uh, a tragic turning of events and we know that God is sovereign but it still hurts and uh, the fact that it hurts and that we cry simply means that we care it doesn't mean that we're emptied of hope it just means that we loved her and we love Jean and that family and we love Matt and Annetta and their daughter Michaela and uh, I just want to ask you to be in prayer for them that the Lord would give them strength. And uh, I just can't imagine what, uh, what they're facing today. I hope I never have to. And uh, we may need to uh, see what we can do to be a blessing to their family. I told Brother Gene and Brother Matt, whatever you know, we can do to be a, a, of help to them, Linda and I want to do that personally, but whatever we as a church can do for our missionary family, we want to sure do that. And uh, so please pray for the Sharp family uh, today. Uh, they desperately need it. And uh, it's funny, I, I talked to Brother Gene, and a little while later I was just thinking about Brother Matt, knowing that his sister had died. And knowing he was down in Mexico City. And um, so I called him and he picked up on the very first ring and he said, Brother Chapel. And uh, we had a, a cry together and he said, you'll never know how much it means to me that you called. He said, uh, apart from the first call that we received, you're the only one that's reached out so far. He said, we love you so much. And thank you for reaching out to us. And uh, so please remember all of these folks who are just having a very, very difficult time. Um, Brother Sharp and Benita uh, had the opportunity to, to spend months in the Philippines uh, last uh, year uh, working on uh, building several radio stations there. And... Uh, and I know that those are going to be some cherished memories. And uh, they have a sweet family. And uh, Wade is uh, 16 and Lacey is 13. And the other kids are rallying around. Um, they're e they've been, either been in college or are working uh, somewhere around home. But uh, folks that are going to need, need some real help in prayer. And... Uh, if you have your Bible, I want to invite you to go back today to Proverbs chapter 6. And uh, uh, 
I think that we just need to just take a moment and go to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, and let's lift up Brother Sharp and his family to the Lord this morning. Lord God, we thank you for your loving kindness to us. And Lord, we thank you that you're a sovereign God and we know that you do all things well. But Lord, today we lift a family that is brokenhearted to you. Lord, we know Brother Gene and his children and Benita, we loved her. But God, in your wisdom, you saw fit to take her home. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give comfort to Brother Gene that nothing in this world could compare to. Lord, I pray for these children whose hearts are shattered. I pray, Lord, that you would just sustain them. Lord, I pray for Matt and Annetta and Michaela. Lord, dealing with this loss, pray that you would comfort them. Lord, help us to uh, just do what we can to try to be an encouragement. And uh, God, I pray that you would somehow through this time of great loss, allow your glory to be revealed May someone come to know you as Savior that perhaps otherwise never would. May we as believers be stirred to serve you more fervently. And Lord, I pray that you would just now as we open the word of God, speak to our hearts. And Lord, help us to be more wholly dedicated to your purpose in our life. And this we ask in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, I had it all together. I didn't intend to come on here and just blubber, but um, just can't help but thinking about it. You know, sometimes a, an event like that puts everything in perspective for us. And as difficult as we think we have things, sometimes um, there are stark reminders that there are people that are dealing with far worse and uh, it helps us to thank the Lord for uh, the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. And um, now I perhaps would be sharing with the church family uh, ways that we might be able to be a help to the Sharps uh, through this time. Uh, but I have a daughter the age of Lacey, and I know that she needs her mama. And I have a son about the age of Wade, and I know that he needs his mama. And so it's just it's tough. I love Brother Gene. I, I'm sure Brother Gene has spent 60 nights in my home, sleeping in my house, eating at my table over the years. I know that he's, he's flown out here for events in my life and paid for his own ticket just to be here to show that he's a friend. And uh, I want to be a friend to him in this time. And uh, many of you know Brother Gene. You've had the opportunity to interact with him and, uh, and you appreciate him and his ministry. You know how sweet his wife was. And uh, I texted him and asked him if I could call him because I knew he'd have family around him. And he, he said yes, and I called him, and we just cried together for a little while. And, uh, you know, in times like that, I'm telling you, words fail us. And uh, we're not so wise that we can offer the words that give comfort. That's something that God, through his word and by his Holy Spirit, is able to do. And... Uh, I acknowledge that I am wholly inadequate, uh, but I want to find my sufficiency for these things in the Lord. And uh, Proverbs chapter six, we uh, we started here yesterday, and. I just want to read this again and kind of help set a context for what we began talking about 
uh, yesterday. And here the Bible says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. You know, the Bible says that God hates these things, and in this list of seven things that have often been called seven deadly sins, we find that two of them deal specifically with God's interest in his people telling the truth. We see that a lying tongue, it's an abomination to the Lord. And we, we noticed here that a false witness that speaketh lies, it's an abomination to the Lord. And uh, sometimes when we uh, think about uh, truth telling and honesty and integrity, we, we pride ourselves in the fact that we tell the truth. And yet, so often, as we pointed out yesterday, while we're telling the truth, we're not consistent at living the truth. And I believe that the Bible is so clear that we're to uh, focus on the things that are true in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. And we're to, uh, to live the truth of God, but we are to live a life that is consistent before the Lord. If we were to take the time uh, today to just go through the scriptures and, and discover all that God says about hypocrisy and about deceit, uh, it would be amazing. There, there would be a multitude of scriptures. I think about what it says in Proverbs 20 and verse number 10. It says, <clears throat> Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are alike abomination unto the Lord. And what this is telling us is that uh, a double standard is an abomination unto the Lord. You see, diverse weights and diverse measures were used by dishonest people in the marketplaces. When their friends came to buy their goods, they would use a different measure or a different weight to charge them. And then when someone that was a stranger or someone that they disliked came, they would use a different weight. There were two standards of measure that were not the same. It was a double standard. And you know, God is holy. He only has one standard. Sometimes people get the idea that, well, pastors and those involved in, in formalized ministry, they need to live to one standard and that there's another standard somewhere down here for those that just are attenders of the church. And the fact of the matter is that while the Bible does list out qualifications, as I study the Word of God, I discover that God is calling all of us to live a holy life, that God is calling all of us to live a consecrated life. He doesn't want somebody to be really holy and somebody else to be less holy. He wants us all to live by the same rule, to operate according to the same standard, not have a double standard, not have a higher expectation of pastors and missionaries than we have of ourselves, a higher expectation of teachers and deacons than we have of ourselves. Because let me say what that is. A double standard is hypocrisy. It says it's okay to be one way in this situation and another way in a different situation. And deceitfulness is just a lie cloaked in a life. 
Deceitfulness is just a lie cloaked in a life. And I submit to you that what is worse than just telling lies is living lies. You know, I mentioned yesterday that um, a, fu a functional uh, legalism is performance-based acceptance. In other words, setting a standard by which others will be judged and measured as to whether or not they will be accepted by God and man. And you and I have been exposed through the years to legalistic people and institutions that establish standards of performance that become the measure by which uh, people will be accepted into the pale of fellowship or into someone's circle of friends or even accepted by God. And so that is functional legalism. But as we pointed out yesterday, there are so many that will look with contempt upon anyone in a church setting that may just even give off a legalistic, legalistic vibe in their life, but yet will go home and will browbeat people because they haven't lived up to our expectation and we treat them as though they're utterly unacceptable as people because they have not met our expectation of them. And so functionally, we're living out legalism. And on one hand, we say we hate it. We don't want to be a part of it. And on the other hand, we live by a legalistic rule at home and though we're not preaching it with verses, we're practice, practicing it with our attitudes and our actions. And what we do is we teach our families to become life liars. In other words, deceivers. We teach them to behave a certain way while people are watching so that they can gain a measure of acceptability or approval. And what we're really teaching them to do is to live a lie. Now folks, I want my kids to do what's right. But in the end, I don't want them to only do it when I'm there watching. I want them to have a desire to do it when no one but God is watching. And I realize that the person that I am, the person that you are, is not the person that everybody sees when we're gathered together, but the person that we are when we are alone and only God can see and discern. That's who we really are. And how often have we tried to put forward the notion that we're somebody else. And really what it is, it's a failure in Christian integrity to be committed to the principles of living with the fear of the Lord, conscious of the reality of the presence of God with us and choosing to do that which is right because of a love that is in our heart for God, not because someone may be watching and wanting to pass judgment upon us. I know I look back over the course of my own life and I can see many periods of time where uh, in my heart I knew that things were not well. But when I was with others, I tried to feign that everything was grand and I tried to make people to feel and think like, I, I, I was all uh, in good stead in terms of my life with Christ. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. It was a deceit. And what happens is we become lifted up with pride. We, we start acting like we believe that lie. And uh, then uh, we become arrogant about it. We, we start wanting to believe everything that's on our resume. And, and uh, we want to 
we want to talk to people about that and, and tell them uh, about all of our own virtues and extol them. And the fact of the matter is, it's a deceit. It's a lie. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, those kingdom age principles that Jesus gave, he said, only then let your communication be yea and yea and nay and nay. Uh, James, the half-brother of Jesus, said, said it similarly um, in uh, James chapter uh, number uh, five, where he said, um, I'm looking for it here and it's just slipping past me. It says um, in uh, James chapter 5 and verse 12, but above all these things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. What is he saying? He's saying, say what you mean, mean what you say, and do what you say you're going to do. Say what you mean, mean what you say, and do what you say you're going to do. What is he calling us to? A life of integrity. To be people that are honest with God first. We're honest with ourselves when we look in the mirror. And we live lives of integrity and transparency before God in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Let's look for a moment in Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. And here we discover something in verse number uh, 17. It says, He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Not just those that tell the truth, but those that deal truthfully. Those that live a life of consistency. Those that have integrity in their dealings. And folks, I'm just going to say, sometimes we get so wrapped up in wanting to hear all of the news about people. And sometimes because we're unfulfilled and frustrated with the station that we find ourselves in life, that we delight in hearing negative things about others because it makes us feel better about our degree of misery. And so we want to perpetuate things that maybe in some measure we feel make us feel better. And, and you know, that's in the heart of, of, of deceitful men. And they repeat things without even knowing whether it's true. I, I was just going to tell you, the, the Internet is filled with lies. If we removed everything from the Internet that wasn't absolutely true, believe me when I tell you this, there would be a great deal more space on the World Wide Web for more information. Let's not get involved in meddling in other men's matters and trying to repeat things that we do not know are true. Let's not get involved in delighting to share evil reports and, 
had to just think, well, I, I'm telling the truth. You know, the Bible sometimes says this, that a fool speaketh all his mind. Uh, the Bible says even a fool is counted wise when he holdeth his peace. And so sometimes, you know what, you might know something that's true, you think, but wisdom would dictate that it would be wiser not to say it. Um, we don't need to just blather on about everything that we've heard, whether it's true or untrue. If, if we start meddling in the things that don't concern us, um, then the Bible says that that reveals that there is deceit in our hearts. We're looking for ways to ensnare others. And listen, when you dig that pit, the Bible says you're going to fall in it. And so I think that we just need to be committed to becoming people of integrity, not only in just telling the simple truth, but in living the truth not having a double standard, not having expectations of others, and then choosing not to live by that same rule because that is hypocrisy, deceit, which is really a lie cloaked with a life. And folks, um, the Bible tells us that Jesus came in John chapter one, full of grace and truth. If you wanna be like Jesus, be a lover of truth. Be committed to his truth. Be a truth teller. Be a truth liver. And I know that God will bless you. You will become, as we read here in Proverbs uh, chapter 12, his delight. I, I got to tell you something. That sounds awfully good to me. I hope it does to you too. Let me just say that my heart is heavy today. I know many of you feel the same way. Uh, continue to be in prayer for Brother Gene Sharp and his family, Brother Matt, who's lost his sister suddenly, and, and uh, Aneta down in, uh, in Mexico City. I know they appreciate your love, your thoughts, and your prayers. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Pray for us as we continue with the Lighthouse Projects. I'm praying that God will continue putting it in the hearts of people to contribute so that we can continue doing the things that need to be done to continue providing uh, the kind of ministry that would be of honor to the Lord down through the years. Have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll talk to you later.